Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to our Wednesday night service. I am happy to tell you that the sun is shining, and the other wonderful thing is right at the moment there's no wind. I'm really happy about that as well. And uh, again, I want to thank those of you who helped with the workday on Saturday, but I also want to thank those of you who helped with the supplemental workday yesterday and today uh, because uh, uh, the wind created two more workday projects after the fact, and so I'm grateful uh, for help in getting those done as well. We're going to stand together. Brother Carl's going to lead us in a song. Okay, number 443, Sunshine in the Soul. Thank you. It's all standing, please. There is sunshine in my soul today, more glorious and bright than glows in any earthly skies. For Jesus is my light. Oh, there's sunshine, blessed sunshine. When the peaceful, happy moments roll, when Jesus shows his smiling face, there is sunshine in my soul. There is music in my soul today. A carol to the King, and Jesus listening can hear the songs I cannot sing. Oh, there's sunshine, blessed sunshine, when the peaceful, happy moments roll, when Jesus shows his smiling face. There is sunshine in my soul. There is springtime in my soul today. For when the Lord is near, the dove of peace sings in my heart. The flowers of grace appear. Oh, there's sunshine, blessed sun. Well, happy moments roll when Jesus shows his smiling face. There is sunshine in my soul. There is gladness in my soul today and hope and praise and love for blessings which she gives me now for joys laid up above. Oh, there's sunshine, blessed sunshine, when the peaceful, happy moments roll, when Jesus shows his smiling face, there is sunshine in my soul. Wonderful singing. I can tell Mick's getting excited because he raised his hands over his shoulders. Okay, I'm going, wow. Okay, good to have each and every one of you here tonight. How wonderful it is to be in the house of the Lord. And think about this. We are only four days away from Resurrection Sunday. And I'm just so excited when we get to this wonderful uh, time of year and we think about everything that Jesus did for us. And we think about that he died and he didn't stay dead. He rose from the dead because he's God. And there's a big difference between being man and being God. And Jesus literally fulfilled the work that was necessary so that you could spend eternity in heaven with him. What a wonderful thing. And you know what? If he died for us, is it really that big uh, requirement for us to live for him it isn't let's have a word of prayer together dear heavenly father we thank you for your word we thank you for its authority we thank you for its message especially the part that tells us 
about your son Jesus. The part that tells us that you loved us so much that you sent your only begotten son. The part that tells us that salvation is a free gift. The part that tells us that your Holy Spirit is our comforter to help us and to guide us and to empower us. And we pray that you would help us in our Christian walk tonight through your word. And we pray for your answers as we pray to you this night. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Amen. Okay, let's turn to 497. No, wait a minute. Yeah, that's my mistake. Yeah, four, 497. 491. 491. Oh, I'm sorry. Sh uh, shelter in a time of storm. 491. And then look at mine. I corrected mine, too. <laughs> the Lord's our rock, in him we hide. A shelter in the time of storm Secures whatever ill be time A shelter in the time of storm Oh, Jesus is a rock in a weary land A weary land, a weary land Oh, Jesus is a rock in a weary land A shelter in the time of storm a shade by day defense by night a shelter in the time of storm no fears alarm no foes of fright a shelter in the time of storm oh jesus is a rock in a weary land a weary land a weary land oh jesus is a rock in a weary land a shelter in the time of storm the raging storms may round us be a shelter in the time of storm we'll never leave our safe retreat a shelter in the time of storm Oh, Jesus is a rock in a weary land A weary land, a weary land Oh, Jesus is a rock in a weary land A shelter in the time of storm Oh, rock divine, oh, refuge dear A shelter in the time of storm Thou our helper ever near, a shelter in the time of storm. Oh, Jesus is a rock in a weary land, a weary land, a weary land. Oh, Jesus is a rock in a weary land, a shelter in the time of storm. wonderful singing let me give you a few announcements of things that are happening one thing that is happening is right at the end of prayer meeting the choir is rehearsing uh, they're rehearsing for their song on Sunday morning Dave glad you're feeling better and uh, that will be taking place I keep having to remind myself oh yeah I'm supposed to be in that rehearsal too and that said I'm supposed to be in the tenor section so I'll remember that I think I will remember that and uh, so we have that taking place tomorrow again uh, Faith Bible Institute tomorrow at 6.30. Um, there will not, there will still be Faith Bible Institute homework, but a week from tomorrow, there will not be Faith Bible Institute. Uh, because they record their DVDs a year ahead of time, this was the time they had the shutdown. And so what happened is they never recorded a week 11 DVD, and then, starting in week 12, uh, Professor Yates just began talking a whole lot faster. And so that is kind of what's going to happen. And you still have the homework to do, even though you don't have the class to do. And so you'll do a week of homework, and then the next week you'll do another week of homework. And then that following week, 
you will have Faith Bible Institute, but remember it is the, also the once a semester free will offering on week 12, and that will be April 15th. Isn't that, hasn't that apt? April 15th, you know, is it, you know, you have an offering. And uh, so anyway, that will be taking place on that day. So letting you know that. Now, Saturday, men, we have prayer at 8.30. Ladies, you have prayer at 9 o'clock. And at 10 o'clock, we have Easter Resurrection Sunday Outreach. And we have door hangers. We have 1,000 of these. Well, we did have 1,000 of these. But the Homeschool Association has already taken 125 of them. And, uh, and I've heard some of them have already been passed out. And so what you have is you have these wonderful door hangers here, and that gives all the information uh, for our services, our early service, breakfast, Sunday school, morning worship, our evening celebration service, which is a song request night. We actually have already have one of the care centers in the area that actually inquired and asked about that song night. And then, of course, there's a full gospel presentation on the back as well. And so, here's what I would like you to do. Uh, one thing I'd like you to do is be sure to remove this off because then you can actually hang these on the door. That will help you, okay? But the other thing is this. Wherever you live, take some of these and hang door hangers in your neighborhood. You know, just whether it be a, up the street, down the street, a block away. Yeah, you guys... Uh, walk one mile for the first one, walk two miles for the next one, okay? You may consider driving yours, um, but anyway, just encourage you, find your neighborhood and put these out in your neighborhood. This is something really, really easy to do, something really important to do, and then and what I encourage you to do is grab the ones you think you'll need for your neighborhood tonight after service, grab those, and, um, and then, um, of course, on Saturday, we're going to get all the rest of them out. And then we'll have lunch after we're done with that. But I'm really happy with how these things turned out. I'm going to do this in my neighborhood as well. And so I encourage you to do that. And again, just reminding you of the Sunday schedule. 8.30 early service downstairs in the fellowship hall. Half of the room will be set up for a church service. Half of the room will be set up for breakfast. We need... One more coffee cake. Uh, there's a recipe for one more coffee cake. We need one more coffee cake. Um, okay, we have a volunteer right here from our studio audience. Yeah, we've got the recipe printed right there. Then we've got two more quiche recipes. Did you get one of them? Okay, so we need what? Okay. Okay, yeah. Well, there's one more quiche recipe I like to eat. I like to eat, okay? One more quiche recipe is back there if anybody uh, wants to grab that. I, I know they say real men don't eat quiche, but it, it is a quiche recipe, and it has bacon in it, and that changes the whole thing. Oh, okay. Okay, I'll, we will get those things to you, and then basically that whole list is complete. I'm excited about it. And so anyway, we have the service, and then we have breakfast at 9 o'clock, so people literally you retire from the church service, into breakfast, then it's um, we regular schedule, except um, children's Sunday school is going to be combined, okay, and you folks, it's going to be kind of in the Sunday school opening area, okay, and so that's going to be combined, that's going to be unique, um, all the other classes will be regular, regular adult class, regular teen class, then we have our morning service, and it's going to be a wonderful time, choir singing, and then evening again is song request night, our Easter celebration service, I'm even... Um, thinking about throwing all the men up on stage and singing a song. And here's a wonderful thing, no rehearsal required. And so I'm thinking about doing that, and I may do that. Probably even drag some teenagers up there and everything. It's going to be a good time. And so uh, all these things are taking place. We're going to have a wonderful, wonderful uh, time in the Lord. Does anybody else need a prayer bullet? Anybody who did not get a prayer bullet tonight and you need one right now? Uh, just checking right now, everybody taken care of. Looks like everybody so far is taken care of. Okay, um, except for me. I don't have one, and so I would like one. Yes, I, I just make them. So 
Uh, just a second. He is eventually coming. So, um, at this time, uh, Jared, are you are you are you do it? Well, I got another one coming here. I think that's it. Who ate them? I made thirty of them. I made I made thirty of them. Okay, I don't know. Maybe the printer ran out of paper and didn't tell me. I'm not sure. I'll have to check that out. Okay, at this time, Brother Carl's going to lead you in one more song here, and that is number 263. Number 263. Yeah. The uh, shuttle workers get to eat breakfast first, right? Shuttle workers front of the line. <laughs> yes, that is true. <laughs> Those are the All important right. things. Yes. Okay. 263. Let's stand, please. The Lord is good through twice. The Lord is good. Tell it wherever you go. The Lord is good. Tell it that others may know. Tell of his blessings and tell of his love. Tell how he's coming from heaven above. The Lord is good. Tell it wherever you go. The Lord is good. Tell it wherever you go. The Lord. Tell of his blessings and tell of his love. Tell how he's coming from heaven above. The Lord is good. Tell it wherever you go. Amen. Wonderful singing. Remain standing. I feel kind of foolish for not knowing this. But Danelle's birthday is tomorrow. Danelle! Danelle! Oh, I'm not, oh, I'm not for you. I, I, I'm almost got there. Okay, we're going to sing. Here we go, Danelle, ready? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. Amen. And of course, April 1st is Danelle's birthday. Did you know that April 1st is also National Atheist Day? It is. Now, the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. It's true. And so, at this time, we are going to turn to the book of Ephesians, chapter 5, the book of Ephesians. Uh, looking at chapter 5. And whose prayer bulletin did I take away? Whose did I take away here? Uh, Jim, I'm going to give this one back to you because I printed another one. I walked out there and I printed another one so you can have yours back. Oh, did you find more? Okay. I didn't. I didn't think that they'd all been passed out. Okay. Okay, for those of you live stream, we are incredibly organized here. We are a well-oiled machine. So, okay, Ephesians chapter 5. We're looking at verse 5. Please look along with me tonight. For this ye know that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man, who is an idolater, hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no man deceive you with vain words. For because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Be not ye therefore partakers with them. And again, just uh, by summary saying this, God is saying, this is what you were saved from. Don't go back to it. Or, and if you never were in it, don't go in it. Those are things that, that is going to cause God to judge the earth. 
Then it says this, But ye were sometimes darkness, it means in times past. But ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. Let us have a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray that you would help us this night. Please use your word in our hearts. As we look at the evil around us, doing nothing is an unacceptable option. Help us to know what you would have us to do. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. This phrase is hard to chase down. I've I done a lot of research on it, and you will find uh, this phrase in different variations. You'll find this phrase, it's in movies. You'll find this phrase, it's in cartoons. You'll find this phrase... Uh, a variation of this phrase in the book Alice in Wonderland, written about 100 years ago. You will even find a variation of this phrase that was quoted by the Reverend Charles Schuller. You go, what is the phrase? Don't just stand there, do something. That's the phrase. And sometimes you think about it, you think about, you know, it's in threatening, threatening situations, and it's in situations where... Something has happened, it demands a response, it demands an answer, and you go, Pastor, where did this phrase come from? Since somebody can, nobody can really, truly, utterly pinpoint where the phrase came from. And it's really very, very possible that the phrase came from Genesis 42, verse 1, where it says, Now when Jacob saw that there was corn in Egypt, Jacob said unto his sons, why do ye look one upon another? It says, what are you doing just looking at each other? Go get it. Stand up. Do something about it. It says, what are you doing just looking? Now, there's an important thing to understand, and this comes down to the Christian walk. It's not enough for us just to stand around. It's not enough just for us to say, well, that's good. I believe it. Glad there will be peace and truth in my days. Glad I'll have a good life. Now, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 8 says this, But now are ye light in the Lord, walk as children of light. And that means it isn't enough to know it. You must do something about it. We live in a wicked day. If we don't speak, then wickedness will be the only words that are heard. We live in a wicked day. If we don't act, then only wicked actions will be known. There is a bumper sticker I saw in Kalispell, Montana uh, when I was uh, doing the bus ministry there. And I'd, I'd pull up to this house and I'd put a flyer on the door and there's a bumper sticker on a car and it just said this, all that is necessary for evil to triumph is for good people to do nothing. This is not the time to do nothing. Don't just stand there. Do something. And I want to talk about three things that we must do. Turn with me to 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 7. The book of 1 Peter chapter 4, looking at verse 7. But the end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore sober 
and watch unto prayer. And the term here, sober, doesn't mean sobriety, like you're going to walk into the church building and we're going to give you a breathalyzer test. Um, you know, where we're going to take a blood test and try to find out what your CHT level or whatever that other level is uh, but with, from our good Oregon Green. Um, it says, be ye therefore sober. It means be serious about this. That's hard to do sometimes. I like to laugh like the next guy. I like to laugh a lot. But there's some things to be really, really serious about. And we are at a serious time. It says, be therefore sober and watch unto prayer. And what this is, is and this is the first point. The first point is simple. You must do more than watch. You must do more than just look around at everything that's going on. You must do more than go home and turn on the news or get your smartphone out and, and, and look at the news just to see what is going on. You must do more than watch. And God designed it to be that way. Turn with me to Lamentations chapter 3. Book of Lamentations chapter 3. Uh, sometimes I find it interesting because in the book of Lamentations, there's actually uh, some very encouraging verses in the book of Lamentations. I really like the one where it talks about in Lamentations 3.22. It says, it is because of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed because His compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. What an encouraging verse in the book of Lamentations. But look with me over at verse 48. Mine eye runneth down with rivers of water for the destruction of the daughter of my people. In other words, Jeremiah looked at the state. He looked at the state of wickedness. He looked at the state of destruction. That's why they called him the weeping prophet. He wept and he wept and he wept. How long did he weep? Mine eye trickleth down and ceaseth not without any intermission. He's saying, I am weeping and I cannot stop. But then look at this next phrase. Till the Lord looked down and behold from heaven. He says, I will continue to weep until God takes notice. And God does take notice. Why do you think the Bible says it says he keeps my tears in a bottle? God does take notice of the weeping person and the weeping heart. And God does, and it says God looked down and behold from heaven where God looks down and the question is, why are they crying? And God looks down for the reason why. And here's why. Mine eye affecteth mine heart because of all the daughters of my city. Do you ever look at Pendleton and feel anything? Do you ever look at the people walking down the street? I had an appointment this evening and, and the people had not come yet. And so I was looking outside my picture window. I have a wonderful picture window in my office. That is why my desk is not pointed toward that picture window. Because if my desk was pointed toward that picture window with that wonderful view, I would get absolutely nothing done. And so my desk is not pointed that way, but I had a little time and I looked at that window. And I watched some teens walking down the riverside path across the river. I watched one older adult walking his dog. And I saw somebody else walking farther away. And I looked at it. I, every single person I looked at, I went, said, I bet they're not saved bet they're not saved. I bet they're not saved. It bothered me. It bothered me a lot. And you need to look at your town and be willing to feel and let it bother you. And let it bother you a lot. And you go, I don't like things to bother me. You need to let things bother you. God so loved a sinful, wicked world that he sent his only begotten son. God 
let it bother him. And if you're going to be like Jesus, you're going to have to let it bother you as well. You must do more than watch. Your eye is to affect your heart. And then after your eye affects your heart, your heart is to respond in action. Again, one of my favorite passages is dealing with Jehoshaphat. Um, somebody once made a children's musical about Jehoshaphat because Jehoshaphat, and they called him Fat, Fat Jehoshaphat. And uh, then, uh, you know, he proclaimed a fast all over the nation of Israel. And so he had to lose weight. And they're trying to think, how do we make this rhyme in the children's musical? And so he lost weight, so they began calling him Flat, Flat Jehoshaphat. So that's how they did it. But the reality is there is truth in this, and that is that Jehoshaphat let his eye affect his heart. And it talks about an enemy army coming, and it says in verse 3, And Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord. He set himself. He pointed himself in God's direction and proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. And Judah gathered themselves together to ask help of the Lord. Who else are you going to ask help for? There are a lot of people you can ask help for. Here's what I've discovered about most of the situations when you ask help from people. You're going to be poor. It's going to cost you money. And why do you do that? Because to talk to God is free. Prayer doesn't cost you a thing. And Judah gathered themselves together to ask help of the Lord. Even out of all the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. You must do more than watch. You must do more than look around or stand around. Your eye is to affect your heart, and your heart is to respond in action because of what God is able to do when you actually talk to Him. He's able to multiply things. Ephesians chapter 3, looking at verse 20, it says, Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask. Did you catch that? Well, how do you ask? What, what's called, what is asking God? What is that called? Oh yeah, prayer. What does it say in James? You have not because you ask not. And so you look and you're bothered by it, and you pray about it, and God hears your prayer, and God answers. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. God is capable of multiplying your response. But you can't just stand there. You have to respond. So first of all, you must do more than watch. Secondly, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 14. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 14. As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lusts in your ignorance. That means the pre-saved condition. Before you were saved, before you knew any better. But as he which hath called you is holy, so be holy in some manner of conversation. Wow, nobody corrected me. It doesn't say some. It says all. Well, how much is all? It's all. Because it is written, be holy, for I am holy. What does this mean? Here's the second point. You must be more than Sunday holy. Did you catch that? You must be more than Sunday holy. Sunday holy is not Christianity. Sunday holy is churchianity. It's not Christianity. Because God did not say, be ye Sunday holy. Sunday holy is where the good outfit shows up, the good Bible shows up, the good behavior shows up for two hours, and after two hours over, wipe the brow, I can go back to my other life.
And if you have a life that's different than this life, and if you have a behavior, if you have a behavior in church and your behavior out of church is different, you have a major problem. And one of the major problems is this. You're going to lose your mind before you're 50. Because the Bible says a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. You cannot be stable living two different lives. You'll lose your mind. I've seen many who have. You see, here's the thing. It's okay. For the most part, I only see you here. But God and all of Pendleton sees you the rest of the week. And that's important to think. So what does God see and how does God respond? Well, one, and this is a good thing, God can look at you all week and he can respond for reward. The Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 2, looking at verse 20, But in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. If a man therefore purge himself from these, it means the bad vessels, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified, and meet it for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. How important that is. You see, here's the thing. God can look down and he can see you all the hours that nobody else here at church sees you and he can go, wow, I'm getting some rewards ready for that person. Or Hebrews chapter 12, looking at verse 6. This is kind of a different reward for whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. So God is opening up the closet of heaven and he's pulling out the rewards. Or God is opening up the other closet and he's pulling out the paddle. And what makes the difference? The difference is, is whether you're just Sunday holy or not. That's the difference between reward and chastisement. You see, for God, he's looking for either reward or rebuke. Oh, by the way, Pendleton's looking too. Pendleton will respond one of two ways as well. And uh, pastor, what do you have to support that? Only the word of God. That's all I have. The word of God. Matthew 5, 16, I like this one. It says, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. They may not believe in your God, but it sure would help if they thought you did. If they thought you believed in the God you believe in. And they may even say, wow, he really means different. He is all in on this. And he, he's all in. There must be something about this. Or... Romans chapter 2, verse 21. Bible says, Thou therefore which teachest another, teachest not thou thyself. Thou that preachest a man should not steal, dost thou steal? Thou that says a man should not commit adultery, dost thou commit adultery? Thou that abhorrest idols, dost thou commit sacrilege? Thou that makest thy boast in the law through breaking of the law, honorest thou God. And then look at this. For the name of God is blasphemed among the Gentiles through you. What's the difference there? The difference is whether you are holy or just Sunday holy. And if you're holy, there's somebody in Pendleton that'll look at you and says, Wow. That person may seem a little strange to me, but they sure mean business when it comes to their God. Or they go, man alive. That person says they go to church. They are the biggest hypocrite I ever saw. They live just like all of us lost people. Do the same things, say the same things. Don't just stand there. Do something. And in doing something... You must do more than watch, number one. 
Number two, you must be more than Sunday holy. And by the way, the word holy means to be pure. It means to purify your heart. It means to purify your mind. It means to purify your life. It means to purify your actions. Thirdly, do something about it. Words of perversion must be met with words of purity. Back to Ephesians chapter 5. We're looking at verse 3 here. Ephesians chapter 5, looking at verse 3. It says, But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as become a saints. But then look at this next phrase here. Neither filthiness nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. And what it means is, words of perversion must be met with words of purity. If perverse words are the only words that are ever in the room, then soon, that'll be all we ever know, is perversion. If perversion is all that's ever trumpeted from the rooftops in Pendleton, Oregon, then there will come a day and perversion will be all we ever know. It's not enough to watch. I don't know the life of Lot. I do know this. The Bible says he was a righteous man. The Bible says he watched all the evil around him in Sodom and Gomorrah and it vexed him. But for me, the silence is deafening because nowhere in that process, even though he was righteous, nowhere in that process does it say that he said anything. And if nothing is said, that's all there will be. Words of perversion must be met with words of purity. First of all, I want you to understand this. Complaining directs all listeners to the God ant category. I want you to think about this. Complaining directs all listeners to the God can't category. Well, did you hear what that person said? Did you see what that person did? It's just terrible. It's just awful. Yes, that really built society. See, anybody can complain. I can complain. Confession's good for the soul. I sometimes do. When I shouldn't. Because if all we do is complain... Nothing about complaining will ever direct a person to God. It's the other one that will. Praise. Look what it says here. It says, let all these things not be named among you who become a saints. And then it says this. It lists all these bad things to do and says, give thanks. It turns it around. Because you know what? The giving of thanks directs people to the God can category. Granted, there's some people, they're just whiny. There's a Frank and Ernest cartoon. Anybody ever watch the Frank and Ernest comic strip? Comics? Frank and Ernest? Okay. Um, some of those are really, really good. It's not quite as twisted as Mother Goose and Grimm. Okay. Uh, but anyway, the Frank and Ernest cartoon. And all of a sudden, Frank and Ernest, and they're in heaven, and they got wings, and they got harps. And all of a sudden, there's a little box on a cloud, and it says, Suggestions. And Frank says to Ernest, well, if everybody's so happy in heaven, what's this box here for? Ernest says back, some people just aren't happy unless they can complain. But complaining directs people to the God can't category. Praise directs people to the God can category. Ever see, ever see this uh, bumper sticker on a car? It says, bark less, wag more.
And you know what? God has given us such a good word. Romans chapter 10, looking at verse 15. Romans 10, verse 15. And how shall they preach except they be sent, as it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. We have a good word. And that good word is the gospel of Jesus Christ. That good word is a hope to the people on this planet who are basking in hopelessness. So, Pastor, what's the application of this particular verse? It's easy. Don't have ugly feet. It says if you have a beautiful message, you have beautiful feet. So I'm supposing it means if you have an ugly message, then you figure it out. Don't just stand there. Do something. It's not enough to watch it happen. It's not enough to complain about it happening. You've got to do something. First, do more than watch. Watch into prayer. Secondly, you must be more than Sunday holy or all the people in the world will only see what they see. They'll only see wickedness if we step outside the front door and then become just like they are. Thirdly, we've got to have something else to say that is different than what they're saying. You're in a break room and somebody's cursing and swearing and talking about something awful. Said, hey, you know what? The pastor preached a great message in church yesterday. And, go, and, and if I didn't, just make it up. Um, so, you know, and just um, have something good to say. A couple closing verses here. Acts chapter 17, verse 2. I like this. Acts 17, verse 2. You know why I like Acts 17? Because as far as man was concerned, God had made a real mess of everything. Verse 2, And Paul, as his manner was, went in unto them in three Sabbath days, reasoned with them out of the Scriptures, opening and alleging that Christ must needs have suffered and risen again from the dead. And this is Jesus whom I preach unto you. This Jesus whom I preach unto you is Christ. And some of them believed and consorted with Paul and Silas. And of the devout Greeks a great multitude and of the chief women not a few. But the Jews which believed not moved with envy took unto them certain lewd fellows of the baser sort. It, you can use that. Use that in a sentence. You know, Go out and say, see if anybody knows what you mean. I think you're a lewd fellow of a baser sort. I don't think they'll know what you're talking about. Okay? And gathered a company and set all the city on an uproar and assaulted the house of Jason and sought to bring them out to the people. And when they found not, they drew Jason and certain brethren unto the rulers of the city, crying, look at what they cried, these that have turned the world upside down are come hither also. I just want to turn Pendleton upside down. Because you know what? If you turn the world upside down, I'll tell you what it means. You weren't just standing there. You were doing something. By the way, they got chased out of that town. Guess what the next stop was? The Bereans was the next stop in town. The Bible says this, and this is important to think about. Therefore, to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. So don't just stand there. Do something. Let's have a word of prayer.
Dear Heavenly Father, I pray that you would help us. And Lord, we see, but seeing isn't enough. We grieve, but grief is not enough. What is enough, Lord, is where you have divinely pressed us to move to action. Because, Lord, if all we do is complain about how things are, then that is how things will always be. We pray, Lord, help us to do the right thing. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us sing together. The song is number 240. Number 240, an excellent application of what we've talked about, and that is we need to be more like the Master. Let's stand as we sing this song, 240.